Jean-Jacques Rousseau's seminal work, Emile, or On Education, 1762, is a comprehensive treatise on the philosophy and practice of education. Rousseau articulates radical ideas for his time, challenging conventional notions about how to raise and educate children. He argues for a child-centered approach that aligns with the natural development and innate curiosity of the individual, in stark contrast to the rigid, rote learning methods predominant in the 18th century. The book is structured as a novelistic narrative that follows the growth and education of a fictional boy named Emile, under the guidance of his tutor. Rousseau uses this narrative as a vehicle to explore and present his educational philosophy, illustrating how children should be allowed to interact with their environment, learn through their senses, and cultivate independence and virtuous character. Rousseau's argument begins with the assertion that humans are inherently good but become corrupted by society. In its natural state, a child is endowed with an innate sense of justice and morality, which education should nurture, not suppress. Therefore, education must be attuned to the nature of the child. He introduces the concept of negative education, which is not the absence of education, but rather an approach that focuses on protecting the child from societal influences and premature intellectual demands that could distort their natural development. The first years of Emile's life are marked by limited intervention. Rousseau believes that early childhood should be dedicated to developing the physical senses before engaging the intellect. Physical education is paramount. Contrary to the sedentary practices of his contemporaries, Rousseau champions the idea that children should be active, play, and explore, as these are crucial for physical and cognitive growth. As Emile grows, Rousseau describes an education deeply connected to nature, with practical activities and hands-on learning replacing traditional book learning. Emile learns about the world directly, with his tutor facilitating experiences rather than dictating knowledge. Rousseau emphasizes self-discovery and learning as a self-directed activity. He underscores the importance of teaching children how to think rather than what to think. During the middle years of Emile's education, Rousseau introduces limited scholarly subjects, carefully chosen for their practical value and taught in an engaging and relevant manner. Emile learns to engage with concepts such as property and, so and social responsibility through real-world experience, which fosters his appreciation and comprehension at a more profound level. As Emile enters adolescence, Rousseau recognizes the onset of emotional and social awareness. He expresses the need for an education on sentiment and interpersonal relationships. Emile begins to learn more abstract subjects such as science and philosophy through dialogue and inquiry. This phase also marks the preparation for moral education. Rousseau elaborates on the role of religion in education, advocating for a personal spirituality that focuses on the individual's relationship with God rather than dogmatic adherence to organized religion. One of the most discussed parts of the text is Rousseau's treatment of gender roles in the education of women. When Emile reaches the age of romantic relationships, Rousseau introduces Sophie, a character educated to be Emile's perfect counterpart. Rousseau's ideas about women's education are often criticized as being sexist by modern standards. He suggests that women are to be educated for a domestic and familial role, to be supportive companions to their husbands. Rousseau emphasizes that true learning is relational and emotional as well as intellectual. Emile's education in regard to his heart and personal relationships is as significant as his intellectual education. Through his relationship with Sophie, Emile not only learns about love and companionship, but also about duty, virtue, and the complexities of human relationships. Rousseau details how Sophie's education contrasts with that of Emile, justifying this differentiation by inherent gender differences. While Emile's education is guided by a breadth of experience and autonomy, Sophie receives a more restrained upbringing, designed to prepare her for her role as a mother and wife. Despite these controversial views, Rousseau does argue that both men and women are capable of reason and should be viewed as moral equals. As the narrative concludes, Emile's education encompasses preparation for a practical life within society. Rousseau advocates that one's education should ultimately be aimed at living a good and happy life in the real world, 
which involves balancing personal freedoms with societal responsibilities. Emil, now grown, is seen to strike this balance, being neither a slave to his passions nor to societal expectations, embodying the ideal of the natural man, living in accordance with his environment and community. Rousseau's Emile, or On Education, is groundbreaking in its call for educational reform, advocating for developmental appropriateness, individuality, experiential learning, and the nurturing of critical thinking and autonomy. The text posits education as a lifelong process contributing to the formation of free and moral individuals who act out of conscience instead of conformity. Rousseau's work has had a profound impact on educational theory, pedagogy, and the way we conceive of childhood and the process of learning.